Well, we spoke last night about Kashmir, and uh, the Prime Minister really feels he has it under control. I know they, they speak with Pakistan, and I'm sure that they will be able to do something that will be very good. I spoke about it last night at Mr. Modi, do you want to add? भारत और पाकिस्तान के बीच कई बायोलेटरल इश्यूज हैं और पाकिस्तान के प्रधानमंत्री के चुनाव के बाद जब मैंने उनको टेलीफोन किया था तब मैंने उनसे कहा है कि पाकिस्तान को भी गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़ना है पाकिस्तान को भी अशिक्षा के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी अशिक्षा के खिलाफ लड़ना है पाकिस्तान को भी बीमारी के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी बीमारी के खिलाफ लड़ना है हम दोनों देश मिलकर के गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़े हमारी असुविधाओं के खिलाफ लड़े और हम मिलकर के दोनों देश की आवाम की भलाई के लिए काम करें ये संदेश मैंने पाकिस्तान के प्रधानमंत्री जी को भी दिया है और राष्ट्रपति ट्रंप से भी हमेशा हमारे इस बायोलेटर संबंधों के संबंध में बात होती रहती है between uh, india and pakistan uh, there are many uh, bilateral uh, issues and after uh, uh, imran khan became the prime minister of pakistan i uh, called him up to congratulate him and i told him that uh, pakistan needs to fight poverty india too pakistan needs to fight illiteracy india too pakistan needs to fight disease india too and so together let us join our forces uh, to fight poverty and all the ills that are facing our two countries let us work together to for the welfare of the people of our two countries and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the message that uh, i uh, keep giving my counterpart in pakistan along with uh, president trump we also uh, keep talking about the different bilateral issues between us mr modi would you like to have president trump be involved in negotiating between pakistan and india भारत और पाकिस्तान के सारे इश्यूज बायोलेटरल हैं और इसलिए हम दुनिया के किसी भी देश को इनके लिए कष्ट नहीं देते हैं और मुझे विश्वास है कि भारत और पाकिस्तान जो 1947 के पहले एक ही थे हम मिलजुल करके हमारी समस्याओं पर चर्चा भी कर सकते हैं और समाधान भी कर सकते हैं India and Pakistan uh, have uh, uh, all the issues are of bilateral nature and uh, we do not want to give pains to any country in the world uh, to uh, in fact uh, uh, try to do anything in this because these issues are bilateral and i trust that uh, before 1947 when we were one country that even afterwards we can find solutions through discussions the president that all is on the table I'm here. I have a very good relationship with both gentlemen, and I'm here. Uh, if for any reason, but I think they can do it themselves. They've been doing it for a long time. Mr. President, the Chinese have said today publicly that uh, it's more low-level calls that have happened, and they're downplaying the significance of the calls. The U.S. administration. I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. Low-level. Uh, the vice premier is low-level. I don't think so. Uh, what's in your mind, though? Uh, what is the position of the gentleman that was quoted in the newspaper today? Right. Well, the Vice Premier uh, Leo Vo came out with a very significant statement, and we've been communicating uh, through intermediary back and forth with him. Right. the Vice Premier of China. Yes, sir, I understand. That's I, I, not low level. I understand. I agree. Uh, I was just, uh, there was a statement that the, the spokesman for the foreign ministry for instance, said they weren't aware of the calls happening. I don't know about a story. There's, there's been communication by at, uh, at the Vice highest Secretary. level. Thank you, Mr. At the highest level. Can you clarify the policy? No, I don't want to go into it. We don't want to go into it. Hey, look, in the meantime, our country is doing great. We're doing great. The uh, Prime Minister just congratulated me. Everybody that's met has congratulated us on the job we're doing in the United States with our economy. Our economy is phenomenal. Best it's ever been. And that's despite the trade deals. And when the trade deals get done, like we did with Japan yesterday, we did a really big, tremendous trade deal with Japan. And we have others coming. We're negotiating now in earnest with the European Union because they want to do that. They want to do that, and I do too. So we have. When we get these deals done, this our country will be transformed. I mean, it'll be monetarily transformed. It's such a difference. 
between the horrible, horrible one-sided deals that we had in the past. And frankly, past administrations should be ashamed of themselves for allowing that. But we have many of them. One of them is the USMCA, Mexico-Canada. And hopefully that'll get uh, voted on very quickly. Everybody wants it to happen, so hopefully we can make that a bipartisan bill. But we have many trade deals that are doing very well, and including China. And I think it was necessary to go through this, uh, you would say, a rough patch, but I'd say maybe much more than a rough patch. But that's okay, because we've been paid billions and billions of dollars. And you know that prices haven't gone up, and there's been no inflation, and we've put a lot of money in the Treasury, and, uh, you know, tens of billions of dollars. And I've given a lot of it to the farmers that were hurt. I've been able to give a lot of money, compliments of China to the farmers that were hurt, because they were, we gave them 16 billion, and we gave them 12 billion the year before. That made them whole. That was the amount of money that China didn't invest in our, to our farmers, give to our farmers. So the farmers have been amazing, but they're very happy with the job we're doing. But eventually, they're going to be the biggest, or one of the biggest beneficiaries, okay? Did you, did you, did you, did you attend the climate session? Say it. Did you uh, make it to the climate session? Were there any conclusions that you should I'm going to. In fact, it's going to be our next session. So we haven't had it. Do you have a message that you'd like to deliver to you? No, I want clean air and clean water. And we're right now having the cleanest air and cleanest water on the planet. But that's what I want. I want absolutely clean air and clean water. Mr. President, just briefly back on China. We saw the comments from you about wanting calm. Um, calm. Calm, exactly. Just wondering if you could clarify what you meant about the call. Was that with light I, I don't want to talk about calls. calls. We've had calls. We've had calls at the highest levels. But last I don't night, want to talk about that. Night, but the call. vice chairman put out a statement last night that was a statement and saying that he wants to make a deal and he wants calm. And I think it's a very good word to use, calm. It's not a word that I use that often. But it's a good word to use. And I think it's one of the reasons that's a great country. I mean, they understand. I think that that message also helps with respect to Hong Kong. I really do. I think it makes it easier for Hong Kong to do something. And I think that President Xi will do something with Hong Kong. I really think that message is a good message with respect to what the ultimate outcome is in Hong Kong. Very, very positive message. And uh, we appreciated it. We appreciated it. What else? Anything else? Mr. Tra uh, Mr. President, what are your uh, your latest thoughts on your threat on pulling out of the WTO? And if you do, can I also ask Mr. President Modi what your response to that in, in, in terms of how it affect India's trade strategy? Well, we haven't been happy with the WTO, but now we're winning cases. We won the big Airbus cases, you know. Uh, it's a tremendous case, and it's uh, billions of dollars. That was a very recent victory, and we're winning cases now. We're being treated more fairly now the WTO, which we appreciate. He actually speaks very good English, we just don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, uh, you should uh, let us uh, discuss these things, and when we feel the need, we will communicate to you. <laughs> Russia uh, has just recently said they have no intention of asking um, to be readmitted uh, to the G7. Uh, however, no, I wouldn't expect they'd ask, because why would he's a proud man, he's done a, a real job, and why would he ask? No, it's something we discussed. And it's under discussion now, no votes or anything. But I would be inclined to say yes, and so would others. And some probably wouldn't be, but it's just a discussion. No, I would think that he wouldn't do that because he's a proud man. He wouldn't ask. But uh, if something would happen, he would be asked, and I, I'm sure he would say yes to that. Do you have any indication from them that they would accept? No, I, I think it was a very good discussion. It was the initial discussion, but it was a very good discussion. But I think it would be appropriate. I think it, was, it would be good for Russia. I think it would be good for everybody. I think it, it would be a positive. But it's just a discussion that we had. It was a very interesting discussion and, and very uh, pretty even. I think ultimately people like the idea. 
Mr. President, what would be your message to the American people in terms of what is your biggest achievement at this G7? Well, we've had a lot of achievements. Uh, we have an achievement with Prime Minister Modi because we're doing great trade. We're doing a lot of trade with India. That's an achievement. I think, obviously, the Japan deal is a tremendous achievement because it's one of the biggest trade deals and it affects directly our farmers. Even the fact that he's taking all of the excess corn that China didn't take. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of corn, and he's buying that. Japan is buying all of that corn at a fair price. And, uh, you know, that was great. So that was very important. I also think that unity is very important. You know, we had a very good, despite the newspaper stories, the stories bear no resemblance to what's taking place. You saw me with Chancellor Merkel. You saw me with all of them. We had, the relationship is great. We have seven nations. In addition to that, we have other nations like India and others that came in. Australia came in. Scott. We have a lot of people came in. And I'll tell you, that it's been total unity. And what would be the area no of most unity, There's been sir. no dissension. And there's been no fights or arguments. There's been no know anything. I mean, we have, there's been great unity here, and honestly, the papers haven't reported how good it's been. So what would be your most common ground? You know, is it climate change? Is it gender oh, equality? Oh, I think we have a lot of things, but I think really the unity, the the, uh, the fact that we're all getting along so well, I think is one of the big takes from this. We really have good relationships, and we're doing a lot about a lot. Okay? Just so we get our reporting right, I'm going to give it one more crack on China. When you were referring earlier to the Buddha statement, we all saw, did you mean to say that there was also a call last night, or was there not actually a call last night? There were discussions that went back and forth, let's just leave it at that. Last night, and last before last, last night. Yes. Which yeah. time? Last, which time, and before last night. <laughs> Numerous. Look, they want to get something done. I've been saying that for a long reason. And why, why wouldn't they? They want to get something done. They've lost millions of jobs. Their supply chains are being hurt. And once those supply chains go, you can develop new supply chains, you can't get them back into China. So China is is run by really a great leader. I think he's a great leader. He wants to do something. They lost over three million jobs in a very short period of time. A lot of companies have left China and they're leaving China. They want to get it done, I know that. I could have told you that without talking, but we are talking. And would you still like to see US companies Depends on whether or not we make a deal. If we don't make a deal, I'd like to see him leave China. Absolutely. If we make a deal, I'd like to see him stay there and do a great job. Mr. President, on the Afghanistan peace talks, do you have an updated timeline? Or are there any snacks? No timeline. Whatever it is. We're no rush. I mean, we're there. We're really a peacekeeping force more than anything else. Don't forget that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, what would be your message to the American people in terms of what is your biggest achievement at this G7? Well, we've had a lot of achievements. Uh, we have an achievement with Prime Minister Modi. We've had an achievement with Prime Minister Modi. We've had an achievement with Prime Minister Modi. We've had an achievement with Prime Minister working along with the Taliban, with the government, and other people too. And we'll see what happens. No time left. Okay. Thank you very much. We're, we're going to be doing a news conference in a little while. So. Just one more thing. Just if one you need one, do you need one? I don't think you need yes. one. I mean, I can't imagine any other question. I just want to thank uh, the Prime Minister. He's a great leader right here. Would you, would you allow him to have nuclear weapons? Would you allow him to have nuclear weapons, sir? Thank you, Press. Thank you, Press. Would you allow India to have nuclear weapons? Thank you, Press. Thank you. Thank you, Press.